Hey Church, as we continue in our Holy Week Unwind, um, first, let me just give you fair warning. This may be the last time that you see me not wearing a hat until we get back to our regular services because uh, things are getting out of control. And uh, we are going to try to see if we can cut my hair on our own. But I don't know how that's going to go. So it may be Hat City from here on out. We'll see how that goes. But um, as we spend the rest of this evening in Good Friday, I want us to really hone in our focus to what happened on the cross. Um, what drove Jesus to the cross. You know, if, if you've been a Christian for any time, or even if you're not a Christian, you likely know the story of Jesus dying on the cross. Why did that have to happen? And, and what we have to understand as Christians is that, you know, we, we know that God is a God of love, right? First John 4, 8, God is love. And so we know that, but what we can't forget is that in that, Love and justice cannot exist without one another. God is a God of justice. He is a God of righteousness. And so when there has been something wrong, when there has been, uh, when there is guilt, there has to be consequences. And so Jesus was willing to take on all of our sin, all of our failure for us and take that to the cross and nail it there on our behalf. And so what I want to encourage is I want to encourage you to go through and read through uh, the four accounts that we have, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Go read through all four of them tonight with your family and um, take the time to pick out what stands out to each one of you about the crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, what is God speaking to you about the crucifixion of Jesus? And take some time personally to think about in your own life, why did Jesus have to go to the cross? Why, why was that necessary when you look at your life? And take some time and, and meditate on that. But, but don't stop there. I want you to then take that meditation and flip it and turn it to, why was Jesus willing to do that? Think about when we talked yesterday about how Jesus looked at his followers and he loved them and that love drove him to do something about it. So he washed their feet. But of course we know that the love of Jesus doesn't stop with washing our feet. He, the love of Jesus drive, drove him to be willing to cleanse all of us, to, to have uh, humans who could be totally pure and righteous before God. But we know what it took to get there. We know what it took for him to be able to cleanse you, and it was the cross. And so take some time to meditate on those things today. What is it in your life that drove Jesus to the cross? What was it in Jesus? What did that love have to have looked like? What did he feel that drove him to the cross for you? And take some time and read through the accounts of the crucifixion of Jesus and just sit and think on those things as a family. Don't, don't just let this be some historical thing that you read about once a year, but think about the reality of this. Put yourself in the crowd. Put yourself there. Think of what it must have smelled like, of, of what you would have seen, of what the crowd must have have sounded like, and the feeling of bodies bumping into you as people are pressing in to watch the crucifixion of Jesus. Think about how you would have felt and what you would have thought when you see Jesus communicating with the other thieves on the cross, those who are next to him, and, and try and put yourself in that position and really grasp on to what this all means. Why did Jesus do this? Why was he willing to do this? And allow that to shape the trajectory of how we move into Easter Sunday. To, to fuel uh, your passion behind how you live as a Christian. And so I just ask that you would take the time uh, tonight and tomorrow morning even to meditate on those things. To draw in closer to God and allow him to speak to you about his son 
and the crucifixion. And we'll see you again tomorrow, church.